concept of Eishis Vas Torah on an illusionary level that the Eishis Vas Torah is referring to the Neshama. The beauty of the soul is something not to be understood or comprehended. That's how special it is. And due to the machinations of the evil inclination, the Neshama has become soiled due to the sin. And he explained when it says you will bring the Eishis Yafas Torah al Toch Beisecho, it refers you're returning the soul to the body. Because as a result of the sin, the neshama detaches to a degree from the body. But when you do tshuva, when you repent, and you realize and understand how you were seduced, you bring it atoch beisecho. You bring it back to the body. There's an Rechaim Akkadah says somewhere, it says maybe over here, that we've discussed in Nefsha Chaim, a human being is comprised of three components. You have a nefesh. The nefesh is the life source that every living creature has a nefesh, means life source. Then you have a ruach. You have a spirit. And then you have the neshama and you have a soul. The spirit allows one to have the ability to speak. Spirit. And then the neshama is the ultimate. A person who truly becomes evil, evil. Meaning, how does one become evil? Through one's actions. If the domicile becomes so abominable due to the evil actions of the person, the soul totally detaches. And a person doesn't have a soul. An evil person does not have a soul. It's like there's an expression, he's so evil, he has no soul. It's such an, if actually, based on Kabbalistic writings, a person who's evil could exist just with a nefesh and a ruach, does not have a soul. But even when the person is not a rosho, there's some degree of detachment. But when you do tshuva, you bring the soul back to its original location, its level of association with the body. And this is, you're bringing the soul back to the house, to your house. I want to go further in the Rechaim Pirish, Oz HaCheshek Shoyel Obdivre Ayetsu Pituyov, Yal Bishem Bolasakim Lohamuskolos, Vaola Makayim Shkulotov. Meaning, the, because you recognize the seduction, you have a desire to bring the soul back. Vaomro Evesto Besechon Fishal Yede Pitu Hara. Due to the seduction of the evil, of the evil inclination, the soul detached from the body, and what replaces it is the evil. We spoke about the concept of Aver Gorer Savera. That when one does a sin, it creates a negative energy. That negative energy replaces the location where the soul was. There's a person, there's a verse in the Eov that a person is able to destroy his soul with his anger. The Gemara says in Tainus that after a person passes away, who testifies, who attests to the actions of a person, his body. Everything is etched on the body. Based on your level of involvement, you know, today, if God forbid a person holds up a bank and they give a packet of money to the robber, what happens when the robber just about leaves the, the bank, the packet of money explodes and there's a die in that packet 
that goes on his cans and clothing and takes days for it to wash off his his skin. So when they, even if he escapes, ultimately, if they locate the person who has this dye on his hands or any part of his body, they know he's the thief. When a person sins, the result of that sin leaves a residue of what that sin represents. So the one's body attests, did he do a mitzvah or did he do and I very did he do the sin. You're soiled. The soil, the impurity of the sin remains on the person. And that's what the word means, that one's, the beams of one's house attest for the behavior of what, what actually happened. <laughs> one is victorious over your, one's inclination. <laughs> now you're a person, bal <laughs> nefesh. Now you're in control of your soul. Now a person has to go and cleanse and reinstate and rehabilitate the soul from all the illnesses which came about due to the evil. The hair and the nails. It says, you must shave her head. That's the removal of the hair. And you must perfect the nails. And you have to remove the covering or the mask of impurity, which is covering the the neshama. You're stripping off the layers of impurity that came about due to sin. You remove the garment of captivity from her. As we said, the soul was taken captive due to the evil inclination. So when you regain control of your life, you're removing that garment of captivity. And it's referring to the cleansing of the sin. Preparing yourself, orient yourself to have an understanding. It's a, you should bring it to the location which is exclusive for the Jewish people, Shubes HaMedrash. Where do you bring the soul for this level of rehabilitation? You bring it to the Beis HaMedrash, to the study hall, and the soul dwells in your home. What is the home of the Jew? That's the Beis HaMedrash. And one has to confess with tears because it defied it's his it's father and mother, which is frank to God. We say Avinu Malkenu. Hashem is Avinu is our father. you abandoned, you turned your back on the Jewish people, on our heritage. Yerech Yomim, this is important. And how long do you cry? How long do you do tshuva? For a month. Hamaspik Loshov. You cry and you confess for a month. This is a preparation before Shoshana. This is alluding to Chodesh Elu. This is the Ani Ludodi Ludodi Li. This is the month of we get close to our beloved by taking the initiative to make the corrections due to what happened during the year. Bacha Tovoe Leo. And then you will come to it. You'll be able to benefit from its illumination. That the soul that toils, it toils on your behalf. It will allow you to be established in a location that you, it will be beneficial to you. And you'll be considered the actually the owner. 
You took control of your soul due to your initiatives, your choices. And as a result of even on their resurrection, the soul will come back to the body. It will be your wife. I mean, there'll be that cleaving, that attachment. The soul will reattach with the body to become one entity. So this is the concept. So this is the illusionary aspect of the what of the issues of us Torah. Okay, I'd like to discuss the case of the Ben Sora More. Yeah. Yes, Alisi. So, just a quick question. Maybe I missed it. The the beautiful garment. What, what does that represent in this knowledge? No, it doesn't speak about the beautiful garment. It says you remove the garment of captivity. Does it say in the verse, the pasuk, beautiful garment, similar shivya? No, no, it's true, but, but right, does it stick to Rashi's chat or it's different, completely different? No, which, without speaking about the, the garment that they wear to seduce the people in battle. That that's that's the, right. that's, that's a physical garment. Rashi's explaining it according to simple understanding. A woman's take a woman, you t t take her back in battle. The woman. So the women, the Gentile women, they would wear special garments to seduce the men to be able to, to have relations with them, sexual relations. That's, that's what Rashi learns. And that's the simple understanding of the puzzle. But the Archimist Kodesh is explaining it based on this illusionary level. The Simla Shivya is you're removing the garment of impurity from the soul, which was cloaked due to one's, the, the seduction of the Eitzahara, of the evil inclination that the person was seduced. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just want to uh, try to understand. So the fact that the illusion to we're in a war is the war is it's it's the, the war. war. The he says, he says say la milchama. This is the war of wars. It should have said right, live. War. This is the this ultimate battle. The, the moment we come into this existence, until we leave this existence, we're battling a battle on all fronts. It's a forefront battle. That's what we're dealing with. 24-7, right. every moment, we're confronted with a, a question of choice. What choice do you make this moment? You know, the what is the woman of beautiful form? The beautiful the, woman is, is the that soul. The, That's the that? soul. No, the beautiful woman is the neshama. You uh, see the beautiful... How do we see it? How do we see it as... No, which means you how, begin... How do we see it as No, you recognize... Woman. You recognize the soul is called the beautiful woman. You only appreciate that beauty of what it is once you strip off all the impurities of the Itzara, when you realize that you were seduced, you were duped. You know, it's interesting. There's um, a negative commandment, you're not permitted to put a stumbling block before a, a blind person. So Chazal tell it doesn't mean a blind man's walking down the street and you put out your foot and he trips over your foot. It means that a person, you advise a person to sell his property and he doesn't realize that you're only convincing because you want to actually have a third party buying the property. That's loss. You should not deceive a person to bring about a level of loss to that person. So you convince them to sell the property, have a third party buying it, and ultimately that third party is going to transfer it to you. It's the same thing. The evil inclination tells you the Torah, the religion, it's archaic, it's backward, it's outdated, it's not relevant. So you're convinced, and therefore you take a different direction in life. When you realize that you were duped, that you were deceived, that you were fooled, you begin to realize, and you realize the preciousness of what you left and what you abandoned, so what do you do? You, you want to retake it. That's the confession, this is the crying, and you're coming back to your father and mother and you're removing the garment of captivity of the consequences of the sin, which is the impurity of the sin, which you're coated with, which you're cloaked with. Okay, that's the Rechaim HaKodesh. But I want to bring out one point, it's, it's a phenomenal point, that the Mensura Mora, 
which we speak about, the rebellious son, he steals from his parents, he buys meat, he buys wine. And he, he, he becomes a repeated offender. And the Torah says, you should take him out when he's relatively innocent, because ultimately he's developing an addiction. And if you allow him to develop this addiction, he'll become a highwayman, a bandit, and he will commit murder to support this habit. So mutav sheyomus zakai velyomus chayiv. Better he should die, relatively speaking, innocent rather than guilty. That he should be guilty of murder. So what do you say? What was the scenario? He starts stealing. He bought from his parents. He buys meat and wine, which is an indication is going in a direction which is not a good direction. He becomes a repeated offender. So we see the path he's taking. A gluttonous past, he's becoming addicted to a certain lifestyle, and he has to support that lifestyle. The meat and the wine. And therefore, ultimately, he won't be able to support it on his own. So he'll, he'll do whatever he has to do to be able to support it, and ultimately, he'll even kill for it. However, you look in the Midrash, it's, it's, it's much more than that. The Midrash says, what do I learn from Ben Sora Mora? I learned from Ben Sora Mora, the whole behavior of this rebellious child, Avera Gorer Savera. Because he stole and he acted in this unacceptable way to buy the meat and the wine, and he repeats it, that Avera will bring him to greater Avera, even to commit murder. So it's not just an addiction. A person, God forbid, takes drugs. And becomes addicted, he took to drugs. So you say, why? Because he allowed this substance to enter into his system and he craves for it and he has to support that habit. And he'll do anything to support the habit, even to kill. That's the drug addict, the way we understand it. When we speak to Ben Sora Mora, the reason why he's becoming addicted to this lifestyle is because he sinned. It's based on the principle of Avera Goris Avera. As Rav Chaim Velozhin of Basis is on the Zohar, that when you cr do a sin, when you, cr you transgress, it creates an impure force, and that force overtakes your life, and it causes you to crave more of the same. So you desire more of that impurity. And one level of impurity brings you to another level of impurity. And it builds on its own. So it's not you're addicted because the person drinks and he eats and he develops a lifestyle, he becomes a glutton, he wants more of it. It's rooted in Aver Goris Avera. It's a whole different concept. It's not just he's addicted, he's become an alcoholic. It's initially stealing a small amount of money from his parents, buying the meat and the wine. He hasn't drunk enough or eaten enough to become the alcoholic or the glutton. But it's an occasion he's going in a direction. But why will that direction continue? Because Avera Goris Avera. We find something similar. We, the Torah discussed in, um, in the portion of Shoftim. We spoke about the Ir Miklot. That a person goes and he kills inadvertently. Takes like, inadvertently. He has to flee to a city of refuge. So the Torah speaks about. What about if a person was premeditated murder? and he flees the city of refuge, he, he's not protected. He's taken out and he's put to death. So you'd say a person kills deliberately, he's put to death. The Torah gives us the background. The Torah says, ish A man who hated his fellow. And he laid in an ambush. And he smited him, he took his life. And he fled to Ori Miklot. The city refuge does not protect him. He's taken out, put to death. So Rashi cites the image. What do we have to give the background? A person that hates his fellow, and therefore he lied in ambush, which makes sense. And, and he committed murder, he took his life. So Rashi says, Mikano Omru, over Odom al Mitsukalo. When a person transgresses, a lesser transgression, 
Ultimately, you're going to transgress a much more severe grave sin. The Torah says you're not permitted to hate your brother in your heart. That's a negative commandment. So because he violated ultimately, that could bring him to commit murder, God forbid. So why is he committing murder? He hated him, and the hate built to such a point, he committed murder. That's rooted in Avera Goresh Avera. Otherwise, Torah does not have to give us the scenario. He hated him, and therefore, ultimately killed him. It's understood, that's the way it is. No, the Torah is telling us, it's only because he violated Lo Sisno Chichbo That hate only builds because he violated a negative commandment. That creates that negative force, and the negative force takes over your life, and ultimately, unless you do tshuva and correct it, it takes you to another level. And it goes from bad to worse. Similarly here, the child is bar mitzvah, steals from his parents, and buys meat and wine, and he becomes a repeated offender. Why ultimately does he commit murder? Not because he's just an addict. The basis for that addiction is because he stole, and that's a vera gores a vera. It's a whole new insight in what causes addictions, it's not just the substance, but rather it's actually, it's the sin component, which creates this negative force, which actually overtakes a person's life to bring you to another level. It's a whole different understanding.